and you obviously have the Ravage, and then you're also getting Kraken Shell into Nightmare Arrow combo. So you have a frontliner that can actually deal with getting jumped. Whereas if you picked anything else, you might feel like you had to pick a save, because if not, then whoever gets Nightmare Arrowed or Gripped just dies. But now you well, have a way of getting think information. That they're, do you think there's still an option for them to go for that save? Because you're talking about jumping yeah, in with really Ravage. Good. That's like a one-time thing. It's not spammable, especially for the laning stage, right? Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think speak. they. I don't think they're picking Tide for Ravage. I think it's a. It's like an added benefit. But the the mm -hmm. primary reason they're picking him is for his second and third spell. Um, t Ravage is so it's kind of like sometimes when we talk about Enigma, you know how we say the black hole is ten seconds to go. An added the threat benefit. of the black hole, and sometimes the threat is as, as strong as the spell itself, Five right? Seconds. Um, mm -hmm. The thing, the thing about Tide is Ravage is a really long cooldown, and the, in the tempo of Dota right Radiance now, I think man. if you're picking Tide for Ravage, a lot of the time it's going to be a mistake because uh, whenever it's down. Your hero is too weak, it, unless the Anchor Smash and Kraken Shell matchups are really good, in which case you're still very valuable. So here, you can imagine, let's say there's a team fight, Secret Ravage, win or not, uh, beside the point. Tide has Ravage on cooldown. Usually what other teams will do is they will be like, oh, there's no Damn Ravage, let's go take Rosh or a Tower. Man. But because of his matchups here, he can actually still just frontline and survive. Uh, he'll, he's going to buy a Vlad's, Anchor Smash all of Lycan's units, get a lot of HP. He can even double Anchor Smash with Caudal. Uh, he gives them a natural front line for Void Spirit to play behind, so he can move around a bit better. Uh, I just, I really like it for that reason. But I, I do think Ravage is a luxury almost, as Damn weird as it sounds. To go. It's kind of. That's why he's picked well, so rarely, right? If you pick Tide right. for Ravage and it was that good, it would be picked a lot. But it's just not enough. Lone Druid, of course, picked by Team Secret, which I'm personally surprised that it uh, lasted that long. Um, yeah, I assume Matumba plays that. Although I'm sure uh, Nisha has as well in the past, but it feels like a Matumba uh, hero for sure. It's probably Matumba, yeah. And now and they need we'll to decide. They need yeah. to decide now what role the Void Spirit is. Uh, I think Clockwork has some merit in this game as a four or even a three for Zai. It's really good against Shaker and Bane. Uh, the Mirana matchup might seem bad because of Leap, but actually a lot of the time it goes the other way, where Clock is one of the few heroes that can reliably get on top of you and then knock you back with Cogs. Basically like a, a 2.5 to 3 second stun. A lot of the time that's enough. Um, the matchup against Lycan is pretty rough though, so maybe they don't like it for that reason. I'm just trying to think like what else would stand out with what secret you should Dyer's play. Pick. They're going to ban Ursa, hmm. giving Tide yeah. a better game. Probably concerned Lycan could go mid, and then they can just put another carry against Tide. Um, obviously, well, they, also they only have three seconds right. of reserve time, so this is essentially their time in a nutshell. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the Viking draft is a little bit more straightforward with what you're expecting, and the fact that Secret does not Ten get final final pick means that the Void Spirit. I mean, it, it's cool and all to have this flex pick, but obviously it's Five more seconds. impactful if you do have the final pick of the draft. Right? Yeah. Pick. So now Viking can actually Monkey react. King. Monkey. All right, Monkey okay. King. Okay. So Nisha, I assume? Yeah, uh, and it has some good matchups. It's very good against Lycan. Um, you get so much armor in the ring that it's one hero Lycan can't really man fight, and the passive damage from the ult really messes with him. Um, you have a good lane matchup into Lycan if you want to try to set that up. 10 seconds to go. And as far as, again, it's nice to have a frontliner if you're Five playing Monkey seconds. King. If somebody else can really give you information, you get vision, then it's way easier to find the right angle from the trees to get into the fight and enter. Uh, you even have a bear to give you vision too. 10th big quad. Queen. Wow. Take your queen of pain. Yeah. And it's the Arcana. Hell yeah. Get to see some whipping action today if they're in melee range. Well, semi-melee range. In Monkey King range, let's say. Whatever the hell range that is. Definitely not melee. Pretty much, yeah. It's a strong last pick, and it's boom. He loves this hero. It's one of the things that Viking have had the absolute most success with. And his matchups in lane are pretty good. You either play against Monkey King, which is a good co-op matchup, or you play against Lone, which I think is a good co-op matchup right in the start. And then maybe can get a little tricky, but I still think co-op does fine. Or you're playing against Tide, which is a farming lane. So... I reckon it's going to be Quad versus Monkey mid. And you reckon? 10 seconds yeah. to go. Although mm. you could. It's an offlane Mirana Shaker probably from Viking. You could play safe lane Monkey King into this with Caudal. 
and put the tide or sorry put the loan mid they have options it's hard to say it, it depends what secret are aiming to do the most if their goal is to shut down lycan they try to get tied into that lane and then they want monkey king i think to have the second easiest lane would be my choice mm -hmm. just because the tempo and lone druid can lane against squat for sure matsu is very very good at this hero so now i know yaps should play super greedy on pretty much every single hero and we have zai playing tide hunter this this time around who I mean, not that he can't farm necessarily. It feels like by the end of this game, Yapsor will have more farm than Zai. Is that uh, is that a bold prediction, or is that generally? Yeah, how it goes? I think that's unlikely. Okay. Uh, just be also because Secret in in the last month have adjusted a little bit, I would say, in terms of farm priority. Uh, Yapsor takes less in a lot of games, and mm. Puppy actually takes more. So what? Uh, but Yapsor is still Yapsor is still by nature, if you will, a rather greedy player, but it's not anymore the classic, oh, Yapsor just takes, like, out farms his offlane consistently. Like, that's not how they play it anymore. Oh. Okay. I think you'll see well, it we'll in see. this game. But, um, last time he played Void Spirit, his net worth was not very great. They still won the game. He made a, a big play, I think, and, and kind of pulled them back in the game. Uh, well, it's like he always makes a big play. So, going through the lineups themselves... Places Disregarding the team. I mean, Viking, not to take anything away from him, but Secret right now is just looking incredible. Who, whose lineup do you like more? Mm. Just as compositions. I think, honestly, it's pretty close. Like, there's some really good matchups in the Tide Hunter in this game, and I think the Monkeys game is also very good. But at the same time, Viking's lineup has tons of low cooldown fighting capability. Um, with just easy to set up stun combos against a lineup with no save. That's always dangerous to play into. You can get caught at any point in time. So mm -hmm. I feel like it's relatively even, uh, which makes me favor Secret, right? You just have to, based on results. Um, fair but, enough, fair enough. But Viking has beaten this team before. They've 2 0 Secret. Uh, before their ridiculous streak, go. Secret did get, I believe, knocked out of a tournament, actually, by Viking. Or they knocked him into lower bracket, and then I don't remember, but they lost two zero to Viking. It was a knockout game. It was. And we've game. cast a few of Viking ga Vikings games. Uh, we've definitely changed the way we pronounce their team names several times, as you've already <laughs> seen in this cast alone. But yeah, they've been pretty impressive. I mean, obviously not as consistent as some of the tier one teams, but they're. I feel like they're knocking on that door. Uh, mm -hmm. And obviously, and a series like this can go a long way. All right. Looks like the bounties will be split between each respective team. So Shad on the Lycan. It's going to be bot lane with the help of Celery's Bane. Going up against, looks like, is this actually, okay, Nisha Puppy in the bot lane. So where does Yapsor go? So they do Coddle Monkey. Oh, they're aggro tri laning, actually. Is, are they, is he actually staying for this aggro try? Looks like it. I think so. Okay. okay. So this was an option I wasn't considering because I really thought they wanted to tie it against Lycan. But another way of dealing with Lycan is just playing... Like, outnumbering him. If if Viking are to bring a third hero down here, I don't think they're really favored in this lane, because Lycan is very bad at tri lanes. Oh my god, that's a good blinding light. Wow. Celery's actually Salary. gonna die. Mm. Couple more right clicks, and first blood goes the way of Nisha. <laughs> I mean, that that's was really I good execution never with spells. Whoever says Crazy. Celery, mmm. I don't know. That's, <laughs> that's <laughs> really... Well, if you put uh, enough ranch on it, it's anything's delicious. Yeah, I mean, sure. ranch, mm. Right. Mm -hmm. Ranch. Uh, Let's just call him Ranch the rest of the game. Is that what you really want? No, don't dude. I so. celery is just not my food, man. It's <laughs> that's fair enough. It's like one of my it's least favorite and healthy. things to eat. I think. Yeah, and terrible. Not as much as Brussels sprouts, though. Apparently. Anywho, first blood goes the way of secret. Uh, looks like yeah. Yapster is going to stick around a little bit longer. So, is there? Uh, I guess the adjustment is RMS coming. On the Earthshaker. So they will play it so 3v3. Yeah, I don't know. Now that Puppy skilled Blinding Light, this is a lot better for them, I think. It obviously gave them a First Blood, which is high value. But uh, you would love to have Illuminate here to keep pressure up and push in the waves so the enemy team can't pull and to ideally hit multiple heroes. Very nice CS there from Puppy actually getting the big creep. It'll be fine here with a blind. Um... But yeah, I'm not sure if this is the adjustment that Viking want to make, but it might be the one they have to make. Playing this lane 3v2 is rough, and Shaker won't put enough pressure on the tide top, right? Zai is going to be so fine up here. I think this matchup against Marana is mega easy as well. 
So the yeah, dice, the Most, mostly courier. just a farming lane, I assume, as uh, looks like a courier's taken out. Matumbas, it looks like. So that is probably a wash of an off lane and a mid lane, kind of what we talked about. Quap versus Lone Druid. Uh, how do you like that matchup? Are we going to fight or what? Mm. Like, like I said before, I think Quap does very well right in the start, but then after a little bit, Lone Druid probably pulls ahead. That would be my guess. And obviously, like, some a play Lone Druid always has in mid that I think is a bit underrated. It's just his ability to just pull waves, right? Like, you can always send your bear between the towers, grab the wave, and pull it somewhere else. Whether it's on your hills Radiance where you get better positioning, or like apart. he did here, pull it next to a neutral camp. Um, somehow losing a creep here just ran past him. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Technical difficulties. But yeah, it's, it, it might just be with the higher, better understanding of loan that this lane is a draw at this point, basically. Mm -hmm. At least close. Yeah, so it looks like it's the try v try that we're going to be mostly watching right now. Nisha, going to have a little bit of harassment with the boundless strike onto the Bane, who has three stacks of Jingu right now. <laughs> Puppy being really annoying with the blinding light. This hero has got to be one of the worst to play against. Not even including all the combos that you can come up with in terms of the dual lanes. Uh, they do miss an Aether Remnant, though. Yapsor does, so not able to find any sort of kill. I mean, how much kill potential do we have on Viking's side? I mean, the Earthshaker can obviously get off a good block, but in terms of getting kills, do you see any possibility? It's pretty unlikely. Without a misstep? It's pretty unlikely. And that's a problem, because the constant harass that Secret poses here will eventually whittle them down. Like, Shaker doesn't harass much, but... You can always do an Ether Remnant into Blinding Light or Ether Remnant into Monkey King Stun and harass people, whereas the enemy team kind of just has to sit back and try to pull. And you can see in the CS that Nisha's pulling a hard big time from this. He's 25-9 and nine to the 14-5 of Lycan. It's a very big lane win coming out from Secret there. Yeah, that's huge. Um, Coddle, by the way. Going for a very unusual build. I don't know when the last time I've seen this happen, actually, All right, in an official game. Puppy is two and blind. Basically, everyone lately on Caudal has been getting a lot of more points in Illuminate and very little in Blinding Light. And at least sometimes you get a value Blinding Light point for laning, but then mostly you would max Chakra or then start going Illuminate. But he's actually going 0 to one uh, It's pretty Is it pretty possible unusual. that this was a misclick? I'm looking at how it... Uh actually scales it's not the greatest i mean the damage goes up slightly obviously the cooldown and mana reductions are pretty standard so it's essentially cast range and a little bit extra damage and the duration that lasts one more second from three he to might, four he might want to have it for oh, the purpose of countering lichen don't know mm -hmm. like feeling oh, like if he has more points in it. to get last hits just uh, just for countering Lycan when he comes online, right? Like having low cooldown blinding light against Mung, uh, <laughs> yeah, against Lycan's army is really good, obviously. But still, still very unusual. I'm curious to see if he gets another point or if this was just a all in, baby. Why not? Oh, Yapsor, he does have an Aether Remnant in the bot lane. Uh, looks like it will not connect, but Seller is actually just stuck it. in this position, blinded into it, like you said, and down he goes. So two kills on the board thus far for Secret. As, like you said, Monkey King is farming the crap out of this game right now. Another Aether Remnant, this time into a Boundless Strike. Not enough to actually get a kill on Aramis, but damage has been done. He has very little HP. As Marana in the top lane... Taken oh, out this by is bad. Zai. This is real bad. Wow. Yeah, they have to TP Bane up here. Okay, they brought Quap. <laughs> but not only does he die on Marana, but he dies with a full wave in tower plus a siege creep. So somebody has to take all this experience and Bane TPs for that. And Quap rotates and uses Sonic Wave, which means now Matu is very safe in the mid lane for two minutes because there's no Sonic that can kill him. And they have way more pressure on the bot lane. And basically, Toby has to go down here, he feels like, on the Marana. Let's start leaning here. Secret off to a really good start. Like, look how at the CS you... in the top lane, too. Like, how much Tide is winning by mm. Yeah, 31 and 3 versus 17 and 2. Yeah, they're just... I mean, mid lane is the closest. Something 36 and 7 on the Lone Druid versus 32 career. and 6 on Quap. Technically, Lone Druid is winning that in terms of the CS. So Secret has an advantage every single lane. Mid lane, in the meantime, we have the Root into Aether yes. Remnant. Kind of unfortunate timing, but of course, you can't really control the Roots. Uh, well... Some can't. Most can't, I should say. I know a couple. But not able to find a kill regardless. How do you die on 
Oh, we're gonna maybe see another death bottom. No, Toby will leap out. I'm surprised that Marana dies against Tide. Explain that to me. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened. He got caught off guard by level six on Tide. I know that much. He got, he got hit by Ravage. Uh, maybe yeah. he wasn't expecting Tide to level up at that exact timing and just was semi low HP. That's my best guess. Radiant he just got ravaged and early. anchored to death. And I was playing very aggressive into him. And at some point, like if you're Marana and there's a Tide running at you and hitting you. You have to fight back, right? You can't just run away every single time and not get any control of the lane. So maybe they were both floating on like semi low HP. And then Zai got the oh, bottom lane. Play. Aether Remnant Yapsor sets up another potential kill here. Toby, not really anything he can do. No leaps available. Oh. Boom actually came in, but the balance strike misses. Puppy getting very low, but will live with 5 HP. Now the pressure is upon Boom. Has three stacks of Jingu Mastery, but. We'll sidestep the rest and I think that'll break things up. So four to one advantage now for Secret, but another kill onto this Marana. Her game feels just awful right now. Yeah, it's it's not good. And it's a hero that likes to play with Radiant tempo, right? We've seen some core Maranas have huge impact, like a team that oh. really stands out with it. Oh, Alright, All right. that's a Sonic. Nice. <laughs> that was a Sonic wave. That uh, looks like Earth And that was a Ravage. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Another oh, Ravage, wow. Guess we're it's using been the two big minutes. spells right now. Nisha, okay. nice dodge on the arrow. Might have to try to fight back here. No, Nisha, nice balance he's, strike. He's a little bit of healing, but there is the nightmare. Yeah. Celery nice with catch. the right clicks and Toby with <laughs> the Star Storm. So finally, yeah. a very high value kill for Viking, it feels like. Yeah, and for Toby who needs coming. it badly, right? Like his. I was going to say, a team that we've seen had a lot of success with Marana has been Team Liquid. They've played at both 3 and 2 as of late, uh, and even 4. But usually when it really takes off, it's from a full-on snowball on Boxy having a great laning stage. This hero with a bad laning stage just feels very lackluster a lot of the time, so... It's good if they manage to pull him back in the game a little bit here. You can see on his Someone net worth is actually still... transition uh, to the top lane, so they might be focusing on this bad boy. But there's pressure being applied by Shad and company in the mid lane, so Puppy's going to have to TP with that level 1 Illuminate. And it is a level 2 Blinding Light still, but of course hasn't really increased his levels that much since we last talked about it. Josh see immediately they bring again. the wall here. They know the range is down. Boom does not have Sonic Wave either, but... Matama is able to get the tier 1 tower all by himself, so defense is successful from Seeker in the mid lane. This is basically oh, textbook like defense, old. but... They're going for more. Zai or Shaker. Good stun. Looks like Zai will likely go down. It's two booms. Scream of Pain. I'm not sure if they actually want to continue the fight, but the root onto the Queen of Pain, into the Fear. Do they have enough to actually take him out is the question. Yapser doesn't have an Aether Remnant for a little bit. So Boom gets out, no problem. In fact, Celery able to sidestep the Aether Remnant as well. Good stuff from both teams here. Uh, I really like the defense from Secret. When you're being pushed on the key tower and you have Tide, you almost always just want to bring Tide there as soon as possible. And Zai came in and defended. Uh, Viking realized they couldn't brute force the tower, but then immediately identified that they could try to run him down in the jungle and get that kill. So it was a nice Land, kill. The way. They don't get the tower though. Ooh, Ooh, puppy. All right. Nicely done. Don't think he had enough damage anyway. Sonic Radiant's was not nearly tower. enough to get that kill. Oh, Toby's in trouble now. Yeah, Radiant's Toby might be in some okay. trouble here. The gush. Oh, Zai did have Ravage. And I was going to say, if he Ravage there as well, never seen this many Ravages at this stage of the game <laughs> from a Tidehunter, it feels like. That's good to see. And tier 1 tower looks to be the next potential choice here for Secret. But they have to worry about losing this mid lane, which is a very important tower. Trouble brewing at Radiant's bottom tower. Yeah, they're going to the smoke. smoke Viking. That was not spotted by the Observer that Secret have down here. I think they smoked just outside of Vision of both wards, so nicely Radiant's done. Bottom and tower this could reward them big time mid lane. Now. Oh no, they that's... They're sleep on the bear. They lose Vision on Matumba. They're going to okay, find him though, and there's the grip. That should be more than enough to get the kill. But the fear comes in at the last moment, but the... Earthshaker ult will be enough to finish off your lone druid, and now the tier 1 tower will likely follow suit. They did get the bottom one, did secret, so it'll be a trade of sorts. Yeah, so looking for the deny, but not the astral step Very to Very good trade for Viking. They get the highest value tower right now, in the mid tier 1. They kill the enemy highest net worth hero, and all they had to use for it was an echo slam that doesn't have a dagger behind it yet anyway. So it's a very hard spell to use in this game 
especially you're playing against a mobile hero in Void, a mobile hero in Monkey, Lone Druid who will generally not be in range with his own hero, but just the bear. So the spell is kind of, I would say, almost low value right now. Um, so getting any good kill out of it is, is great. Looks like puppy baiting. Puppy and Tumba. Yeah, it looked like that was possibly the case. But not sure anything will come of it. Celery, of course, doesn't have Fiend's Grip. Another 60 seconds on cooldown. Fatis Ignis, or Ignis Fatis, is now available, Cinder, and the Will O Wisp, as some call it. Dota 2 officially does call it Will O Wisp, but Ignis Fatis sounds way better. Armis? I think he feels like he's still baiting, but they don't really have anything to TP to if he runs into trouble. And Secret. Playing a little bit safe as a result. Puppy's just all alone now. So it's going to be more of a farming game for a little bit here as Lone Druid working on a Desolator for uh, his oh, bear. Good. Been seeing a lot of minus armor. Mask of Madness into like Deso Assault for taking those towers and just sh shredding supports. What do you think of that build overall on, on Lone Druid? Just as a general build or in this game? Yeah. Well, either. Mm, I, I think... Again, it's about the tempo of the game. It feels like going for the old Radiance build feels a bit wasted in a lot of games because you want to hit this extreme timing around the early portion of the mid game. And Mask of Madness, Deso, really fits the bill. It also ramps up your farming speed on the way, right? When you're buying Radiance, you have this like downtime where you're waiting for so long. But right now, Matsu can join any team fight and have really high impact because his bear is just, it's just strong right now for anything. Uh, right. And yeah, getting strong single target damage on the bear, obviously amazing. Moonlight Shadow right into a grip. We're going to have TP support. Zai is actually going to cancel this. This is going to be a freebie onto Puppy and likely the tier one tower as well. So Wait, he got canceled by an ancient no Prowler Shaman petrifying him. Oh, are you serious? <laughs> yeah, I think he petrified him. Oh, uh, like, that's unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe it was fortunate. He might have ended up being collateral there if he completed that CP. Puppy was absolutely dead when he would come in. And yeah, I don't know. Maybe it could have evolved into a big team fight. A secret. Yeah, I'm looking at their ways of TPs for everybody else. Yapsor had it available. I mean, the problem is Nisha had very little mana. Actually, couldn't even TP the mana that he had. Uh, so probably. Yeah, a, then that's not a tower you hold. Circumstance. I think. Yeah. More good stuff from Viking though, like. They, they seem to have a very good understanding, and I feel like they've really grown as a team in this patch and the previous one, just because they were quick to identify what time in the game you need to be strong and what you need to do. They're very good at moving around and take, taking initiative, getting towers, playing as a team, bringing the right number of heroes uh, to place. And I think the next thing they're maybe looking at here is a potential Roshan. I think in order to get that for them, they need to get at least one key core kill first. Um... And that's easier said than done when you have Fiend's Grip on cooldown. Tower ain't a pretty sight right now. Yeah, that's pretty much been their go-to. When that is up, they've gotten super aggressive, and then everyone in between has been a bit more passive. But Toby on the Marana is working towards an MKB, so no big surprise there. Going for that hard right click. Shad has level 2 Necro. I believe it's being delivered now, so still working on the level 3. And then Yule's now finished on Boom's Queen of Pain. So, I guess the the Root is the main... I mean, Yule's is really good in general, but I'm just looking at the spells that are very useful. The Root is maybe the biggest one for her. Yeah. Celery does. He's root. gonna run into two people, by the way. Secret, looks like they will, in all <sighs> likelihood... Oh, okay. Not get a free kill. It's not easy to hit that remnant, to be honest. It's a pretty difficult angle. Now the TP supports are in, so... Yeah, I, I'm, I'm thinking about what else you get the Yule for. Um, I guess it's pretty good against Monkey King. You can purge off his stacks of, uh, of Jingu. You have a way, like you said, of the Laundred Root. If you're clutch, you can dodge Ravage. Which isn't even that hard, actually. As long as you're paying attention to it, you will dodge it. <clears throat> mm -hmm. It's more about if he's in your vision range or not. Well, Zai uh, is closing in on a Blink Dagger. Just a few hundred more gold to go. Bottom Toby. lane. Uh-oh. Yeah, Toby and Celery together right now. 
Anisha is watching from above. Aramis is available on the back end, though. They're going to start with the Boundless Strike. Grip onto Yapsor. There's the Echo Slam onto two. Beautifully done, but the counter Ravage from Zai into the Monkey King ult. It looks like Aramis will find his way to the grave, along with the Bane Elemental. And now Toby, under that Moonlight Shadow, looks like he will live. So a lot of ultimates expended, and two supports die. Make it three as top lane Puppy gets taken out by Boom. So two for one across the board. That was a super good read from, I mean, really both teams. Um, Vikings set that up as a trap. They're in a great position with the Bane. They got an instant grip out as they needed there to counterplay this fight. Uh, the echo, obviously a bit underwhelming, but that's what you're going to get if it's just two heroes in the middle of nothing. That your echo is not that dangerous. But just as, as much from Secret, Zai just there at the right time. Um, very nicely set up. They were kind of expecting, I think, that Viken were semi-baiting that, just because when they looked at the rest of the map, the heroes weren't there. Here we go. Mm -hmm. New story. It's time for Roche. There's no Ravage. Gonna arrow yeah. here. Is a oh, actually, never mind. There's Pretty no quick arrow. Roche, it looks like. Necro 3 is now online. Um, Toby's not really that close. I mean, Trouble yeah, he's not really that close to MKB. So a couple minutes away, at least. I'm not sure what power spike they're looking for before they just get ultra aggressive. Obviously, they can just use this Aegis how they like. Aegis picked up by the Queen of Pain. They're going to smoke immediately. And they ping around Nisha. Unless that's Nisha's ping, actually. He's going to jump in. And the Yules looks like they're going to go for Yapsor. But actually, the Fissure misses. Link's same with the Enchant Totem, though. Boom. Coming in as well. Lycan's going to pop the ult. The Yapsor are completely out of Astral Steps. So that's going to be an easy cleanup. They're gonna, but they were definitely looking for more yeah, than that. They're happy to cut that when you consider what they got out of it. They used Shapeshift. In the meantime, Secret are pushing all three lanes. They got, I believe they got the bottom tier two tower. They did. Uh, but Zai, now this they could make Zai it now. worthwhile. This is such a hard kill, though. And now that Shad's ult has uh, Just like completely no run out, yeah, they're not going to go any further, it looks like. Too scared of the reinforcements. I like Zai Puppy's trademark move end. of blinding Ready light into TPL. Seems better day. <laughs> Seems to be what he's yeah, doing this Zai game. is left to his own devices now. Arrow nice will miss, but gives a little bit of vision. And Boom will just continue to chase him down. Zai does have a TP, oh but of course... My. Oh, do they have vision? Boom. Oh, the fissure from the back end. And that's going to be a kill, finally. That was forever, actually godlike movement from Zai. Uh... Good for Viking to get that kill. That one would have stung a lot. He basically played this fog completely perfectly with what he did. He dodged the arrow in anticipation that it was coming. Then he went all the way to the left in the tree line to buy just enough time to blink. Uh, but his blink options were extremely limited because half the forest up here is cut. So he kind of only had one place to go and they do fissure him out. So We're going to have a TP, from TP here from Puppy and Company. Looks like the Ignis Bassus will be... Used and it will be used effectively to take out the Bane Elemental. 19 minutes, 52 seconds. Nisha going for this outpost. I'm not sure if he oh, has it by side. himself. It's close. And controlled by the Dyer. Okay. Yeah. The Northwest. So he gets it just in the nick of time. The Absor had a 50 50 there against Toby on the Remnant, and he threw it facing the wrong direction. Or he could have maybe mm. got the Marana there too. But. Yeah, that's a, that's a big cooldown from Secret to only really kill a Bane. They do get the outpost, like you said, though, so that definitely is valuable. But it could prompt another aggressive play from Viking now that they have all their stuff, except Moonlight Shadow. Could but they will have MKB. They're going to do that. Yep, they're going. Coming very shortly. Toby just needs to get some mana in the item, yep. and he'll be good to fight for now. But yeah, there is a smoke being used. Uh, Aramis, of course, showing off that Blink Dagger uh, not too long ago. Does have the Echo Slam available as well. A couple couriers coming out. Is this being used to scout? Oh, never mind. Puppy's actually way down there. And that's exactly what Viking is going to try to do something about. See if they get the courier as well. Nope. They're just going to go. Oh my god, the random blind. Really? No. That is unfortunate. <laughs> if he does have the arrow TP. now too. He'll be. Okay. Ah, arrow. Nicely played. So Puppy. So will inevitably die. Oh, the Ravage onto three! Surprise attack from Zai. Celery gets off the Brain Sap, healing himself decent amount, but here comes Nisha, deletes him from the game. Aramis gets off the Echo Slam, it's only onto the one hero, trying to stun as much as possible. As Nisha now turning his sights onto Toby, 
It's gonna be pretty close. He's gonna get that kill. Looks like it'll be a trade of sorts, so as now Boom has come to play. Shadow Strike applied to Zai. Ooh, blink out just in time for Boom, and that looks like it's gonna break things up. It's a two for one. As Zai <laughs> is just continuing to chase this Queen of Pain. But yeah, that that'll be the end of it. Oh, Zai I don't know if Solo should have done that. There. Okay. Oh, he's he gets fine. off the I thought he was gonna and... get caught by the bear. Yeah, the bear is getting a lot stronger. It has the hyperstone in addition to the mask of madness. Are they chasing this? And the desolator. A nice fear. Depsor in the trees right now. I'm not sure if they know he's here. I don't think so. Does have two astral steps available. Out. Yeah, this is an awkward like 30, yeah. 40 seconds. That from from even from our perspective where we can see both teams, that looked dodgy to start going for the bear that deep. Uh, and obviously Viking don't have the exact positioning information that we do, but they still felt confident that they would be able to reset there. Again, lots of lots of good plays from in like lots of good individual plays. I think Shaker played that fight beautifully. Yeah, he doesn't get the key kill that he was looking for. Or actually, he did get Nisha, right? He, they did get Nisha in the end. And he stayed yep. alive himself. The ra Ravage was great. Um, yeah, good Dota. But Secret, again, kind of getting the better end overall in terms of economy. There hasn't been a big team fight win for Viking all game. It's kind yeah, of just they ended up man. using the Aegis, Aegis by yeah. the way. Yeah. Didn't really get much use out of it. Uh, BKB is now online for Boom, though. It 10 second with the, the Yule Scepter. Looks like he's going for Shiva's next. Uh, Toby's still working on... Wait, does he actually not have anything? He has to have something coming. He's had this MKB for a few minutes now. It hasn't been that long. He got it right before the fight broke out, right? He had it for like uh, two and a half minutes, I think. I'll it's say right. three and a half minutes, Cinderin. Okay. Big difference. He did die in the start of the previous fight, so he didn't get any net worth out of it. He was the yeah, first true. casualty. Well, Yapsor has his Yules and is now working towards an Aghanim Scepter, which this game... I mean, now you have extra use of that Yules for Boom, the double silence. Now you have a BKB and the Yules to take off the silence from the Void Spirit. But of course, I really like that Ags, by the way, from Void Spirit's... Uh, feels pretty good. Yules it's into Aether Remnant. Rough. Guess what's happening. Yeah, looks like he's just going to steal tower. the rune and walk away. Can't do nothing about I think he was also hoping to force right a BKB now. charge. Um, but Boom kept his cool, didn't feel in trouble, oh. was right. Smoke is going to be broken by the Earthshaker who blinks out to safety. Nicely played there. And the Courier actually gives Aramis... Here. I believe it brought a Staff of Wizardry, <laughs> which actually showed where he was. Uh, looks like he will be found though. It did cost an dust. Ignis Fatis, Cinderin. I'm yep. not sure if that was worth, but either way. Oh, mid lane! Boom has to pop the BKB and blink away to safety. And we'll use that rune and bottle to heal up as much as he can. That was super close. I'm actually not even sure if he needed the BKB there, but understandably used it. Zai nightmared up, which means Celery can just steal the bounty rune. And that means Viking actually takes three out of the four bounty runes here. So nicely played from them. They are being chased a bit here. Celery TP's out in the face of danger. And Toby should be fine. Bonk his courier. Already delivered the Ogre Axe and then flew back. Mm -hmm. Which he's choosing not even to equip. So you could argue that that's kind of just a borderline animal cruelty to send it into... <laughs> <laughs> risk of death to deliver a nonsensical item right now, but call Peter. Yeah. Well, Shad right now has the assault cuirass, curis, curass, on that lichen. Cuirass, cuirat. Is it really? I can't say that. I, I didn't know for years. <laughs> I really? learned that. I think Ready I learned that tower, this year actually. Or cuirass. Really? I think it is. <laughs> you still Quir don't know. Cuirass. Okay. All right, cuirass. Got it. Cuirass. Thanks, Cinderin. I, I don't know if I'm that not pronunciation saying, is incorrect. No way though. I'm saying that. I saw Poppy is going to get grip, trying to take the outpost. And there's TP support for Marana coming in, and this is going to be an easy, easy kill. 26-minute uh, mark as well. So oh, Nisha actually gets stunned in the tree. Oh. is not in range to get the stun off. Nisha's going to have to pop his ult on the high ground, but they have the damage with Toby just jumping in. Ravage is a little bit too late. Sonic wave to follow. It's a two for nothing in favor of Viking. 
Boom pops the BKB, focuses his sight on that bear, but the bear's really tanky. And it looks like everybody else <laughs> wants to get it as Marana and Earthshaker die, despite all the despite the Monkey King dying very early for Secret. And they find a bane on the back end as well. I love the irony of what happened here. Like, the bear is really tanky, and then it instantly kills the Necro book and dies. <laughs> That was perfect. It was tanky until... Uh oh, Sh Shad? Shad actually got spotted. He doesn't have boots. He can die here. This is possible if they don't buy back. Oh, Any root. There's uh -oh. the root. Must the Tomba. Oh, the this eighth connects. remnant oh, is there. And yeah, this should be a kill question mark. Boom. Gets his shadow strike off. And now, oh. will Yapsar go for this? Yapsar's actually dead. Yeah, Yapsar will die instead. Okay. Good that looked really I... promising for Secret, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. I, the Assault Curas Syndrome. It made him Quiras. so tanky. Curas. Got it. Qui. Quiras. Syndrome. I'm telling you, I'm qui, refusing qui, 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 qui. to say it that way. I'm okay, sorry. That's understandable. I kind of can't no. believe it's said like that. <laughs> I'm not going to accept it. I feel like the heroes that say it in game do not say it like that. I don't think they do either. Or else I would have noticed for sure. As this is going to be the second row, so Aegis and Cheese. We'll see if they can get better use out of it this time. Uh, Toby will actually be the one to take the Aegis. Probably because he doesn't have BKB quite yet. And Queen of Pain, boom. We'll hold on to the Cheese. Still working on the... I mean, it's not that far away. About a plate mail worth of gold away from finishing Shiva's. What are your thoughts Shannon. on his item builds? He has like two very defensive items. Okay, so before I answer this, yes. I have a more pressing matter. Please. I looked a bit more into it. There's a second pronunciation. Yeah. It's Quiras or it's Curus. Curus? Curus. Yeah, that's close to what I was saying. Close enough. How did you say it say. before? Curus. <laughs> oh, now, you're doubt now you're just doubting what you said before. I don't think you've ever said that. Curus? I have. I've definitely been. Curus. I'm fine with Curus. Curus? Is that what you're saying? Curus. Yeah, it should be Curus. curus. Yeah, that's. I can. I can deal with that one. Okay. What or were we you could asking just about? Call it, uh, AC. You can also say yeah, that. That's very safe. I like that. Yeah, me too. Then nobody has to uh, say ass. I was ass. talking. <laughs> I was talking about Queen of Pain's build uh, in terms of itemization. We'll be Speaking of Shiva's ass. Guard, so. Yes. Yes. I mean, look at that. <laughs> I mean, that, that's what you pay for with the battle <laughs> That's what you come for. Shiva's is definitely very good this game. Um, Lone Druid, Monkey King, two high physical yes, damage cores on the enemy team. Uh, also, the attack speed slow is very useful against both bear and monkey, so... Uh, Them yeah, just solid. I, I'm wondering what Boom goes after this, though. Business. I think there's different routes he can take now. He can commit for the full utility with Hex. But I think he'd rather go for damage. He currently is hovering the Bloodthorn, which was going to be my other suggestion. Like, that's a bit of a more aggressive item. He's got a lot of defensive stuff, right? You have Shiva, BKB, and Duel. Well, the problem is his Courier did get killed with the Plate Mill on it. So did you so say Courier or Courier? <laughs> the donkey was carrying <laughs> the Plate Mill. Let's just call it uh, AC. <laughs> no, we can call the donkey the ass, technically, right? <laughs> Yeah. So oh, that, yeah. that is acceptable. <laughs> Either way, uh, he will not be able to get that Shiva's guard for another few minutes, unfortunately for him. Uh, Basher now online for Matumba's bear. Is there anything else on top of it? Where is it? I actually can't find it anywhere. Where's his bear, Cinderin? There it is. Now, he did finish the AC, so uh, that's a fully loaded bear. Uh, what are you expecting on on him after this because it's it's five slotted right now with boots get yeah. rid of the calling blade it doesn't do you, feel like an does Agonim's anybody game, go does ags it? on this game or in this huh. hero still yeah they do i just don't think it's that stage yet uh you you get the abyssal and then you go you don't really feel like you need mkb i think um I don't, I'm not really much of a lone druid player, so when it comes to like what you get in your sixth slot on this kind of mirror, oh boy, Ravage that's a dead co-op. two, and they are deleting the Queen of Pain, and the Bane is so next, and they will just continue on. Yapster doesn't have Aether Remnant, but 
to get off the Yules, Toby's forced to leap away, still with We're the Aegis intact. Why are you doing so good? Yeah, now they're ho they're wishing that he had not only his Sheba finished in his inventory, but perhaps the Aegis as well. It's completely stunlocked, despite having such a defensive build. Zai jumps in again, but Toby's gonna do a lot of damage. You gotta be careful, Fissure. Toby actually stuck in a weird spot now. Has to pop his BKB in order to run past that Aether Remnant. I'm a Tumba Man, just gonna bash him with the bear. That is the Aegis gone. Leap one is available. He gets taunted immediately thanks to the Aether Remnant again, and this could be the beginning of the end for game one. Of Viking pretty Secret. Burial there with the Radiance Mids. Burial? Burial? Radiance Towers in trouble. Looks like this is gonna be minimum two racks. They cannot go for megas. Are they gonna respect us in back out? Maybe they will. They used a couple big ulties. No, they're still going bot. They're feeling it. Oh, nice play. 15 seconds on Queen of Pain. They assume that somebody has buyback, but not anymore. It's been long enough period as Yasser jumps in. If they can get another kill, this will be big, even if it's on just a lowly support celery. Pops that Ghost Scepter and will die shortly after. The zoo is alive. Oh. Echo Slam onto two. Instant Nisha has to pop the BKB and Sonic Wave deletes him again. That's a 3x combo according to that Arcana. And with that, Secret will not be able to get that second rack and will attempt to fall back. And if all they lose is the Monkey King, this is an extreme win for Secret. Tanky Puppy. Reply to Puppy. Make Vanguard. <laughs> and oh, Medallion. Oh, Vanguard. What in the God's name? Is he going for Crimson or something? Uh, I guess he wants Crimson against Lycan. Do they have anything here? Yules oh, came up. Hold on. He didn't use oh, it. Oh my goodness. He had Yules ready he for lived. a full second on Boom. I think he didn't realize it was ready. Maybe that he didn't realize how tanky Puppy definitely was. A kill. Yeah, he's in disbelief. He just <laughs> pressed attack and took his hand off the mouse and keyboard and was like, he's dead. What is this build? Puppy Vanguard? loves buying armor. He, I, I don't think there's any support player in Puppy. In Dota, like really, he has these builds that he will go where he will go medallion mech, or uh, kind of made it kind of popularized just buying medallion in general. And during a time when it wasn't very common, he would love buying that on his supports. He even got the craggy coat, like, <laughs> he's insanely yeah, so he tanky. Wrote an email here. to Ice Frog for that one to drop this game. It's like, this is my armor game. Yeah. Bro. And it's funny because the, the matchup against Lycan is horrible for Caudal a lot of the time. Like, you just get run down by the summons and killed. But when you have 30 armor, maxed out Blinding Light, and a Vanguard, you're actually pretty tanky. Um, he's not even building the Crimson, it looks like. He wants to go for Octarine Core. Yeah, what is, wait, is his courier's dead. Maybe Crimson's on the courier. Is I he? have to assume. Wait, he switched it up, now he's going Greaves. Despite having tranquils already, that's so also I guess good. He's gonna sell those. That's also good for sure. Well, he's probably a, in anticipation of the Co op Orchid, possibly. Oh, this is Radiant a big fight coming up. It's done. Yeah, bot lane, Zion Company were attempting to take out the tower, but a nice stun here onto Nisha. They break the trees. Actually, that was his teammate. I believe Coddle may have gotten him killed. Puppy is going to end up paying the price. That's two for nothing in secret. They do get the range racks and will attempt to fall back. Zai with the Ravage available. Not sure if he wants to use it. He will and see if they can actually clean somebody up on top of this. Queen of Pain again just gets decimated with no HP at all. Coddle will be next though. Buy back onto the Queen of Pain. Oh, there's Abyssal coming for the bear. Uh-oh. But he has the Vanguard on his hero currently. Anchor smash. Looks like they're going to clean up Celery Sticks. Very delicious treat indeed. Does not have the ranch though this time around. Fly back now onto Bane, and I think with that secret probably will be okay with this. Okay, I assume that oh the arrow does hit onto Zion. That's a lot of damage coming from Toby. There's a the counter initiation. Missile. Boom with a huge ult onto three heroes into the fissure as well. Zai looks to be dead as the Echo Slam is being used to very little effect, but did get the kill, I suppose. Matumba being chased, or is it the other way around? The bear is just beating the crap out of Earthshaker. Looks like Aramis will actually go down. Two Yapsor, and it'll be another trade of sources. This fight is continuing somehow. Matumba Man, this will be a big kill. They really need this. He keeps healing. <laughs> Jesus H. Yapsor, the lone survivor for now. Attempting to get out of dodge. Boom gets Yules. Yapsor with the nice TP, arrow. but the arrow connects. And they not only defend the range racks, it did cost them a couple buybacks, Syndrome, but. I mean, you can't ask for much more at this stage of the game, it feels like. I mean, when you consider how that fight started, it's kind of incredible that Secret even got a fight out of that. They lost their Monkey King and Caudal before the fight really began. 
I'm pretty sure you're right that Puppy Dyer's probably cut the tree of Monkey with Will O Wisp, I think. Or was he not I, in the tree okay. at the time? I think I didn't get to see the beginning, so my assumption probably is that they somehow found Monkey King, stunned him, and then he was forced to use the ult. Right, but, but yeah, I, I didn't don't know get if he ulted while end. the monkey was in a tree. Right, okay. Well, anyway, he was stunned really long, and they just took out monkey. So monkey just wasn't part of that at all. Um, and then they still just make this amazing turnaround around the bottom high ground with the Ravage plus Void Spirit combo, and the bear is just proving to be incredibly powerful. Puppy? Yeah, he just clipped him with that Shiva's guard, and that will likely spell the, the Doom he's of Puppy. So Although he's going to use his... Oh, they did it again! Nisha is stunned for four seconds into the Yules. Queen of Pain attempting to kill this Ignis Fatis. He will get it. He has a level 25 fear now on the Scream of Pain. Nisha forced to use his ultimate, but I don't think it's going to be enough. His Toby comes in with ridiculous right clicks, but the healing from Nisha is out of control. Are you serious? How did he even get that kill? So biting off more than he can chew... And Nisha somehow lives through that engagement and gets a kill. Oh, he got found shown now. again. There's the fear. The Ravage to follow. Nisha extremely low. Needs to get those Jingus up. He will do so, but the Sonic Wave gets him very low. And there's the last right click from Shad. Taking that Monkey King to the grave finally. RMS jumps in with the Enchant Totem. Echo Slam to follow only onto the one. Astral Spirit. Does have two, so Yapsor is fine. Meanwhile, the Siege Creep in the bottom lane, along with the Wave, is actually taking out the melee rack, Cinderin. They have to use Fortification. Boom. Looks like he'll be okay cleaning this up. <laughs> God. <Yeah. laughs> that was pretty crazy that Monkey King actually managed to survive all this. So obviously, he has the Butterfly, but it doesn't really do much against the Mirana and nothing. Or... It, do, it does a good amount against Quop, so that's barely enough. I think without Paladin Sword, he's dead there. I'm pretty yeah. sure that made the difference. Uh, getting all that extra lifesteal and, of course, the, the bonus heal once Thanks, the Jinkus came out. Thanks, Thanks, just, towers taken hit. And I, I, you can't blame Viking for going for that kill. It really looks like Puppy just screwed it up, right? By putting him out of the trees with Ignis. They get an <laughs> opening with a... If they get the fear off on Quop, they get the Sonic out. And still, how does, they didn't have sorry, enough. how does the fear work against Monkey King when he's on a tree? Does he, he actually come off the tree? I think he stays in the tree and is just feared. I'm pretty sure. Right? Okay. Radiance top well, we've seen a couple times Boom hits. with that Shiva is actually being used for vision. Oh, he went huge. in. Yeah, he does go in. Does have Hex. the BKB available. Well, Hex, Puppy, but there's the stun, and wow. Okay. He is dead. Oof. He has just died a horrible, horrible death. That's that is put a them pretty in a big horrendous oof. position. That's two minutes and he just bought hex so he's actually dead for two minutes the game could end off this yeah if secret I mean, realized they, they could the take roche and go straight down mid oh no for sure. they ha they have the refresher shard on roche now uh just a double ravage i assume it could be double Ig uh, ignis fast is actually does not work that way right i don't think they stack uh no they don't stack on top of each other but you can use them delayed shard. obviously yeah well he found Shaker. This is yeah, a big this start. A big kill. Arrow not able to connect. Nisha pops the ult. Toby does have the leap. Looks like he'll be fine here. Aramis. Blink available in one second, but he gets abyssal bladed by the bear. Nice fear. I think he'll be able to find him. Does have his buyback. It just came off. Uh, it just had enough gold for it. This push is so fast with the bear. Yeah, his moon shard was his last that. item. Just <laughs> Okay. What's, what's the attack speed? It hits three times per second. 0 0.34. With Mask of Madness enabled? That is Without absurd. Mask of Madness enabled. Without? Oh yeah. my god. Ravage, there we go. Zai has two. Will O Wisp is applied as well. Zai will likely ravage it on nothing. Oh, there's Bane. 0 0.27 on the bear. It hits four times a second with Mask of Madness. LOL, LOL. Good god, dude. <laughs> Great game. Right, that was well, secret honestly super game one. Yeah, yeah, that was that an entertaining was game. I think both teams played very well. Um, in the Unsecret do I feel like they mainly win this game off of some great individual plays where they're actually outnumbered in fights, but just one player has an exceptional read that they can make the turn and take this fight. Um, and I think for Vikings, something that they ran into as a problem was Shaker's inability to have a big impact. You know, with Shaker, you're looking for those big Echo Slams, but the, the lineup's just not very good for Shaker, in my opinion. This is a hard Shaker game, so I don't blame him for struggling to find major impact. Uh, and then, as often happens with Bane, when it gets to the stage of the game, if you're not farmed, 
your the hero falls off really hard. Anybody gets on top of him, he just dies. So yeah. yeah. Still a great game. I mean, he, I, I like this yeah, game. Celery, I thought, played really well in the early game. They coordinated yeah, all their... Basically, all their kills, the first like 10 minutes, felt like it was set up by Bane. I'll be mean, yeah. right. That hero does feel like it falls off quite a bit. Uh, so yeah, that is game one of this best of three between Secret and Viking. I hope that this goes the distance, and I hope that every game is as entertaining as this one was, because that was very enjoyable to watch. Uh, game two will be coming up shortly, guys. Stay tuned. We shall return.